Hello everybody, I've decided to continue my little series with testing out some old CPUs. Today we will be testing out the Athlon X2 to 215 dual core. Clocked at about 2.7 GHz, we will be testing out games um, such as CSGO, we have StarCraft, and a newer game such as Battlefront. Now these will be the same benchmarks that I did in my Pedom 2 video. And this will essentially be a continuation of a new series that I want to start, where I basically test out some old CPUs. I'm going to run those three games over and over again, and we'll see how they perform. I'll also be running a synthetic benchmark such as Cinebench, um, just to give you guys an easy comparison. If you do want to compare, you can just run Cinebench and see how you know one of these CPUs compares to yours. So the Athlon that I'm currently using is actually from an old rig that my parents bought years ago. It is clocked at about 2.7 GHz. It is one of the only Athlons that only had half a megabyte of cache. All the other X2s had about one megabyte cache. This is also because this is, I'm pretty sure, a an actual fed on quad core that is heavily disabled compared to the other ones which are actually native dual cores. And overall it's very old. So. I've got some interesting results with the games. With the Cinebench score, we get a lousy 74. <clears throat> this is extremely small to most modern CPUs. You're probably going to get beat by a tablet CPU with this thing, honestly. And when we move on to CSGO, we have a very, very interesting thing that occurs. No matter what resolution I set CSGO to, the frame rate was... The, fr the frame rate, Jesus Christ, all right. Frame rate was almost exactly the same. Um, it was definitely more playable than the video will seem. The video, when, whenever I record fraps, the FPS is much lower. But overall, it was still pretty terrible. There was stuttering every few seconds. And putting it any higher uh, with the player count above the standard 20 that you can get in casual or the 10 that you have in a standard competitive match, such as 64 player zombie escape, which I tried playing, Gave me about a 4 FPS average, that was just not playable at all. Um, any kind of physical physics effects that occur, such as smoke or anything, will drop your FPS down significantly. Which basically means a smoke grenade is a flashbang. Actually, it's worse than a flashbang, it's essentially a stun grenade, it's completely unplayable with smoke. Um, so you gotta basically avoid that. But overall, it's somewhat playable, I guess. Moving on to StarCraft, which actually I don't understand anymore because I thought this game was extremely CPU intensive. But it turns out that actually I was able to get playable FPS. This is running the... So the gameplay is of a... Is of a I think it's Soul Wars that I'm playing right here. But the actual benchmark scores are from a 30 minute replay that I've also used in my Phenom Quad Core video. And somehow the FPS is actually decent. I ran for about half an hour and it did get pretty intense. So this actually kind of surprised me. Uh, overall, this is definitely playable. I got all the way to the end of the match, which actually probably about 7 frames average towards the end. But that was still somewhat playable in game modes on the arcade. Most of them at least. If you're playing something like a competitive match, something that's ranked... That's probably not going to be a good thing. You probably want to stay at a much higher FPS. But it actually surprises me how you can have a really bad CPU and still be able to handle um, StarCraft. And also, as with CSGO, setting the resolution lower or higher basically did not make a difference. This is clearly a CPU bottleneck. There is no way I can get the FPS any higher. Once again, this is not overclocked. I will be, I had to overclock it for the next part, which is Battlefront, which essentially ran like a PowerPoint presentation uh, at 1080p. And I also had to overclock it to about 3.4 GHz to even get the game to somewhat run, which was uh, not that great because I had to mess around with the front side bus a bit, which is kind of annoying. If any one of you has an older GPU where you had to overclock the front side bus, you know that it can be a pain because your north bridge and everything essentially gets overclocked at the same time. So you have to keep those in a good ratio with your CPU. Um, 
It does let you get more precise over clocks in a way, I feel, but it's definitely not as easy as just moving around the multiplier and the voltage itself. Uh, overall, even when I overclocked it though, the frame rate was almost unplayable. When I bumped it up to about 4K, the CPU load was about the same, but the GPU load increased to higher FPS and producing somewhat playable frames, although they were still not as high as I wanted them to be, uh, and there was consistent stuttering, consistent FPS drops. Um, it consistently dropped down to the minimum, almost always. It was definitely not playable. Overclocking any higher really didn't do much of a difference, so... Newer games, definitely not playable on this. But, anyways, in conclusion, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you liked it. Anyway, see you later.